This is going to be 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1 says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God, so you would abound more and more. The word furthermore shows this chapter adds to the previous chapter, and Paul has taught the Thessalonians how to walk like a Christian. He leads by example and teaches them things that are pleasing to God. It says, we beseech you, meaning he is asking with urgency. He exhorts them, meaning he is trying to entice or incite them with words or advice. He is urging them to walk to please God. Also notice the verse said that as you have received of us, how ye ought to walk. So the Thessalonians did receive it. They didn't reject the message. And you can tell a lot about a person by seeing if they will reject or receive a rough message from a preacher. And a good step to walking to please God is listening and applying hard preaching to your life. Amos 3.3 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? A Christian can't walk with God until he agrees with God. You can't have your Christian walk down pat until you agree with what God says in his Bible. A Bible corrector isn't walking with God when he changes half of what he says in the Bible. And when you got saved, you agreed with God that you were a sinner in need of a Savior. Micah 6, 8 says, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. If you're struggling in your walk with God, then Jesus is the one who can heal you. Reading the Gospels, you will find how Jesus healed people physically and got them back on their feet, like he did in John 5, 8, where he says, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. The same way he healed men physically, he can do this for you spiritually. Many people are on crutches spiritually. Some men have to go to physical therapy to learn how to walk again, just as some Christians need to do this spiritually. You get this through Bible reading, praying, and seeking how to please God and walk with Him. Whenever you feel like sinning, decide you're not going to walk in the flesh, but rather walk in the Spirit. Paul has a lot to say about turning down the flesh and walking in the Spirit instead. Many people will lie about teachers of eternal security, which is once saved, always saved. They will say, we believe we can do whatever we want to do since we are once saved, always saved. The thing is, I haven't ever met a teacher of eternal security that didn't teach to walk pleasing to God. Paul taught eternal security, and look what he said about our walk in Romans 8 and verse 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And Romans 8, 4, That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. He says in Romans 13, 13, Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. In Galatians 5, 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5.25 If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. We aren't saved by good works, but we should perform good works to be pleasing in the sight of God. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And then there's other verses about how we should walk. Ephesians 5.2 says, walk in love. Ephesians 5.8 says, walk as children of light. Ephesians 5.15 says, to walk circumspectly. Colossians 4.5 says, walk in wisdom. 1 Thessalonians 2.12 says, walk worthy of God. Colossians 1.10 says, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Colossians 2, 6, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 said that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God. Try your best not to walk along with this present evil world. This world walks into places it shouldn't be. And as a Christian, you take Jesus Christ with you everywhere you go. If you will walk to please God, then 1 Thessalonians 4.1 says you will abound more and more. If you abound more and more, 
then you get better and better in your Christian walk. And Colossians 2, 6 says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. We are here for the Lord's pleasure, and that is why we need to walk to please him. It says in Revelation 4, 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. And Hebrews 11, 6 shows that faith is what pleases him. 2 Timothy 2, 4 says that a soldier for Jesus Christ will aim to please him. And notice some things in chapter 4 that will help you please God and help you in your Christian walk. And the first one we see is there are some commandments we need to remember and follow. 1 Thessalonians 4, 2 says, For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Notice he isn't giving the commandments of men. These commandments are from the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why it says, We gave you by the Lord Jesus. I believe one of these commandments is found in John 13, 34. It says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. I believe that was one of them because 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 talks about the same thing and says, For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And Paul doesn't teach to keep all the Ten Commandments. There are more commandments in the Bible than just the Ten Commandments that everybody knows. Sure, we shouldn't lie, steal, covet, commit adultery, or murder. And if you've read the Pauline epistles, he had more commandments to preach than just those Ten Commandments. He also didn't teach to keep the Sabbath. So this shows verse 2 of Thessalonians chapter 4 isn't referring to the Ten Commandments. And Colossians 2.16 says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Showing that Paul didn't require people to keep the Sabbath. He didn't teach that. So to help our Christian walk, we should read the commandments that Paul lays out in his epistles and follow them. Those commandments came from God and not men. Look what it says in the Bible about commandments of men in Matthew 15, 9. It says, But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Titus 1, 14, Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. And the next thing we see that I'll help keep our walk the way it should be is we need to abstain from fornication. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. And fornication is a dangerous sin because it extremely pampers and gives into fleshly desires. It pampers your flesh. And how can you walk in the Spirit if you are giving your flesh so much attention and sinful pleasure the kind that comes from fornication. And fornication is any sexual act between two people that aren't married to each other. Adultery is fornication, but fornication isn't always adultery. Fornication can be sex between two people that aren't married, and it is also sex between two married people that aren't married to each other. Look at verse 3 again. It says, The will of God is to abstain from fornication. People are always wondering what the will of God is for their life. But the first thing you need to do is get the fornication out of your life. And this would include pornographic images or videos. This world is centered around making men lust after women and leads them to fornication. Every other billboard has a half-dressed woman. If you walk in the store, you see women dressed like whores. Every, every store you go into, every mall, every restaurant has pictures on the wall of half-naked women you get on the internet you see instagram facebook and it's just being thrown at you all the time and even good women who may be strong christian women will most of the time dress immodestly and cause men to commit adultery with them in their heart and first thessalonians 4 3 says for this is the will of god even your sanctification that you should abstain from fornication and sanctification means to be set apart. If you're sanctified, then you are set apart for God's use. You are sanctified at salvation. And you have a daily sanctification where you set yourself apart for holy living. Daily sanctification is a process of making your life match your sin, sinless record that God gave you at salvation. 
at salvation, God gave you Jesus Christ's spotless, sinless record. And the daily sanctification is a process of making your life match that as close as you can. And the sanctification in verse 3 is abstaining from fornication. 1 Thessalonians 4.4 4, That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. If you are possessing your vessel in sanctification and honor, then you are prepared to be used by God. 2 Timothy 2.21 says, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. It is completely against the will of God for you to commit fornication. You aren't living a sanctified life if you are in sexual sin and you aren't possessing your vessel in honor. The best way to get out of sexual sin is to get married and stay faithful to your spouse. The Bible talks about it and says it's honorable. Hebrews 13, 4 says marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. And back to 1 Thessalonians 4. It says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. And concupiscence is extreme or irregular, unlawful sexual desire. And this is what lost men desire every day of their life. And in our Christian walk, we need to sanctify ourselves and set ourselves apart from this sin. 1 Thessalonians 4, 6 says that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter because that the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also have forewarned you and testified. Remember Hebrews 13, 4 that we just read. It says whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. And this is what this verse is referring to when it says the Lord is the avenger of all such. We shouldn't defraud our brother in any matter. This also has to do with adultery. If you go beyond and commit adultery with your brother's wife, then you can expect the Lord to be the avenger. Paul warns of this and testifies to it. The main reason to get married is to get rid of your lust problem. 1 Corinthians 7 1 says, Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. And verse 2, Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. And here is another verse where defraud has to do with something sexual. In 1 Corinthians 7, 4 and 5, it says, The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. You don't want to deprive your spouse of things in marriage because Satan can tempt them and lead them to adultery. And Webster's defines defraud as to deprive someone by deception or fraud. And 1 Thessalonians 4, 7 says, For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. And the context is still abstaining from fornication. Fornication is unclean, and God has called us unto holiness. The dangerous thing of fornication is that you can give yourself over to it, and God can give a lost man over to fornication. Romans 1.24 says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. If a believer stays in fornication, then he will be turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, yet his spirit will be saved. Just like a saved man was committing fornication with his father's wife, and 1 Corinthians 5, 5 says this about that man. It says, To deliver such an one into Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Since your body doesn't get born again when you are saved, it is still sinful, and you are therefore still capable of committing any sin any lost man can commit. But look at these verses about uncleanness and fornication. Galatians 5, 19 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. The verse said it's a work of the flesh, so don't walk in the flesh. Ephesians 4.19 says, Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Remember how I said give yourself over. You can give yourself over to things like fornication. Ephesians 5.3 says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, 
as become as saints. Colossians 3, 5, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication and cleanness, in order of and affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. The Bible is definitely against living an unclean and unholy life. God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. And 1 Peter 1.16 says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. But the next thing we see that will help our Christian walk is, Don't despise the commandments of God. And don't despise men that are doing right. 1 Thessalonians 4, it says, He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. If you despise what Paul just forewarned you about, about fornication, then you aren't despising Paul, you are despising God. Many people will despise you if you try to live a holy life. They really aren't despising you, they are despising the God who said to love thy neighbor as thyself. They're despising the God who gave the commandments that you're trying to follow. And we shouldn't despise God or His commandments. Psalms 119.47 says, And I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved. And I will meditate in thy statutes. Even though we are tempted to go against His commands, we should love them. And thank God for sh staying at us about keeping them. It is a sad day when God quits bothering you after you break the commands He has laid out for us. Another thing that will help your Christian walk is to increase your love for other Christians. 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 and 10 says, But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia, but we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. Notice you can always increase in your walk. When you have a love and a fellowship with other Christians, then they can encourage you and help you in your walk with God. We are taught of God to love one another. Just like the verse we talked about before in John 13, 34, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. And something else to help us in our Christian walk is we need to learn to be quiet. 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 says, And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. If you don't say too much, then no one knows how stupid you are. Ecclesiastes 5.3 says, For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. Sometimes you say things that are stupid, and you learn this from experience. I've learned the less I talk, the better off I'll be. I'm quiet by nature, so I may not have as hard of a time with this as other Christians. Many Christians have a hard time not repeating things to others, and they have problems with tail-bearing. And the Bible says a lot about this. It says in Proverbs 11:13, A tail-bearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Proverbs 18, 8, The words of a tail-bearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Proverbs 20, 19, He that goeth about as a tail-bearer he that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets, therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Proverbs 26.20 20, Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out, so where there is no talebearer, the strife ceaseth. Proverbs 26.22 The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. When someone says something bad about a person, and, you, and then you go to that person and tell them what the other person said, then you are being led by the devil or an unclean spirit. You telling them what the other person said will always make them more mad than it would if they had heard the actual person say it. When a Christian does this and causes arguments between other Christians, the Lord hates it. Proverbs 6.19 shows how the Lord feels about you sowing discord among the brethren. And James 3.8 says, But the tongue can no man tame, it is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. But next we see something that will help our Christian walk, and that's to run our own race. 1 Thessalonians 4.11, and that you study to be quiet and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. We need to do our own business and not jump into everyone else's. This world wants to be in everyone else's business. People have started businesses that are all about other people's business. All of these news stations that really aren't giving news, they're just telling you, what happened in other people's daily life. 
and the news feed on Facebook is nothing but people wanting you to hear about their business. We're living in a time where people make vlogs on the internet and you can literally know everything they have done for the past few years. You can know what is on the inside of their house without even being in the same state that they're in. You can literally know their entire family and everything about them. There are people who make a living letting everyone in on their own business. If that is what they want to do, then that's fine. But 1 Thessalonians 4.11 says, and to do your own business. We are living in a weird time where average everyday people become semi-celebrities just by video recording their business for everyone else to see. So we may be living in a time where 1 Thessalonians 4.11 is harder to follow than at other times. But in just one verse, you have two things that will greatly change your Christian walk. Study to be quiet and mind your own business. But the next thing in the verse says that we should go to work and not be lazy. It says, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Also notice it says, work with your own hands. The key word is own. If you do, have done any kind of work, then you will know that at most places you have a handful of people working while the rest lollygag around and sit around doing absolutely nothing. Yet they get paid for it. The job gets done by the hands that are working, but the ones who have their hands in their pockets get paid the same amount as the people that are working. And then you have those who are lazy to even get up and go to a full-time job every day. And 2 Thessalonians 3.10 says, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. You know we live in a messed up world when the men who actually work eat less than the ones who don't work. I worked in a grocery store when I was younger, and people who didn't work always took out two carloads of groceries while the man who worked came in and got a handful of stuff and left. They aren't relying on making a living by the sweat of their face. They're relying on higher up people to keep them up. Just like in the tribulation, the same kind of people will rely on taking the mark to buy and sell. And they are just getting you ready. We shouldn't just work for our things and food, but we should also work for the Lord. We should labor in the word. Much study is a weariness to the flesh. If you want to have more Bible knowledge, then exert yourself more when you're studying. If you want things and want them honestly, then you need to work to get them. So we should study to be quiet, do our own business, and to work with our own hands. Also, it says this in verse 12, that you may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that you may have lack of nothing. So we need to walk honestly toward them that are without. If we are honest in our business, then we won't steal from our employer or our customers. A great witness to a lost supervisor is to see a Christian who is consistent in his walk. Walk honestly toward them that are without. Those that are without are the lost people. So if you want to be a witness in your business to co-workers, supervisors, or customers, show up on time, work hard, be honest, do the job right. And if you study to be quiet, do your own business, and work with your own hands, you're most likely not going to have lack of anything or lack of nothing as the verse said. And if you do, then the Bible also says this in First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 8, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But this has been First Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 1 through 12.